We start to thank God for today, the day he has made. Let's start to thank God. Shall I please rise to your feet and thank God? Praise his holy name. Please focus on God. He's an awesome God. Down at your feet, oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Father, we seek your face. We seek your face. What an awesome God. Let's worship him. Down at your feet, oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Lord, I seek your face. I seek your face. Again, down at your feet, oh Lord. Down at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most high place. In your presence, Lord, I seek your face. I seek your face. For there is no higher calling, no greater honor than to bow and kneel before your throne. I'm amazed at your glory embraced. By your mercy, O oh Lord, I live to worship you. I'm amazed at your glory embraced by your mercy, O oh Lord. I live to worship you. Lift up your hands and adore him. Now we're going to pray. This is like us to pray. When I say the word, I want you to repeat it loud. Is that okay? I want us to pray in one accord. So when I say word, you will say it. When I say word, you will say it. When I say sentence, you say it. Are you ready? Say, Father. Father, Father, have mercy. Have mercy. Say, Father, have mercy. Have mercy. Say, Father, have mercy. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Abba Father, Abba Father, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God is an amazing God. Now I want you to open your mouth and start to pray. Pray. From your heart, pray in your understanding, pray in the spirit. He's here, he's listening. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares. Cast your cares upon him, cast your cares upon him, cast. Your cares upon him, 
cast your cares upon him. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. I say, cast your cares upon him. Cast your cares upon him. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares. For he cares for you. Cast your cares upon him. I said, cast your cares upon him. Cast your cares upon him. Cast your cares upon him. For he cares. He cares for you and I. Wave your hands and bless him. I say, cast your cares upon him. Cast your cares upon him. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares. He cares for you and I. Open your mouth and start to pray in the spirit. Rebo should have a baraka shot at a baraka should have a rebo croco should have a rebo. Rabo bosho da baraka she. Open our side to pray. Rebo croco should have a baraka shanda a bari rebo should have a rebo. Rebo buraka she de rebo. Cast your cares upon him. Cast. Your cares upon him, cast your cares upon him, for he cares. He cares for you and I. Yeah, 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 yeah. for he cares. He cares for you and I. For he cares. He cares for you and I. For he cares. He cares for you and I. He's an awesome God. For he cares. He cares for you and I. I said, cast your cares upon him. Cast your cares upon him. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares. He cares for you and I. Wave your hands and bless him. Rere de bo raba shere de bo raba shore de bo ra ye re 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 de bo. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me hear you born again, Amen. Now let's pray for the service. Open my eyes, start to pray that God will glorify Himself here today. 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 What an awesome God. For he cares. He cares for you and I. I said for he cares. He cares for you and I. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yere de bo shuno robo raka shere de de bo raka shere de de bo. Ye 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 ye
Your God, my God, He's a kind God. He's holy. He's a consuming fire. He's also a dreadful God. But He's our Father. Your God, my God, your Father, my Father, He is love, for He cares. He cares for you and I. Did you hear what I said? I said, for He cares. He cares for you and I. Join me in that song. It's a prayer. For He cares. He cares for you and I. Now you're going to say for me and for you. For he cares. He cares for me and cares for you. Tell your neighbor. Yeah, for he cares. He cares for me and you. Show your neighbor some love. Say for he cares. He cares for me and for you. Hallelujah, our God cares. He cares for you and for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, for he cares. He cares for you and for me. Wave your hands and smile at him. Now blow him a kiss. Blow God a kiss. Are you shy to blow God a kiss? Do you know he's watching? He's watching. His eyes are going to and fro. Can you feel his love here? I said blow God a kiss. How many people in the world are blowing God a kiss now? I imagine God going and saying, Angel Michael, Angel Gabriel, what's going on? I see a group of people blowing me kisses. Isn't that unique? Blowing me kiss, blowing me kiss, blowing me kiss. For he cares. He cares for you and for me. Hallelujah. For he cares. He cares for you and for me. If you love the Lord, let me hear that. Hallelujah. Now that's for the regular people. If you are in love with God, can I hear it out? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody can love me like you do. Nobody can touch me like you do, Lord. You love me well. Hey. Nobody can love me like you do. Nobody can touch me like you do, Lord. Please love me well. Yo, yo, yo. Touch me like you do, Lord. Hey, nobody can love me like you do. Nobody can touch me like you do. Oh, you love me well. Yo, yo, yo.
place of the most high we shall abide under the shadow of the almighty we will say of the lord he is our refuge and our fortress our god in him shall we trust surely he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from every perilous pestilence he will cover us with his feathers and under his wings shall we take 
refuge. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord our refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place, no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling place. For he will give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. In their hands they shall bear us up, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, upon the young lion and the serpent shall we trample under our feet. Because we have set our love upon him, therefore he will deliver us. He will set us up on high because we have known his name. We will call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and honor us. With long life will he satisfy us and show us his salvation. Hallelujah. We serve a God who has never lost any battle. From the beginning, he has won. That is why we call him Abu Bejiki. Why not just say to yourself, thank you Lord for fighting my battles for me. Be blessed as you listen. Ebu 
Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Grace Levites. That was a beautiful ministration. Hallelujah. It's now time to pray because in our kingdom, the command of our commander in chief is pray without ceasing. In the good times, pray. In the bad times, pray. In the times you can't even describe, pray. Pray, pray, pray. No matter what it looks like, we're supposed to pray. Even when it's really good and everything is so wonderful and we're so excited, that is when we even really, really need to pray. So we're going to be praying this morning in obedience to that command. And I want to encourage us this morning. The Bible says men ought always to pray and not give up. Because if we don't pray, we will give up. And looking around us, and it's not even just in Nigeria, it's all over the world. You may be tempted to throw your arms in there and say, you know what, come what me. But we cannot take that position. So this morning, I want to encourage us. We're going to pray with full assurance of faith that the one to whom we're calling on to will hear and answer. Don't say we've been praying, praying, and we have to keep praying. Because the truth is that if it had not been the Lord on our side, either our personal lives, either the nation or the world at large, be a different story. So I want us to come, even if you're a bit disappointed, even if you're afraid, even if you're confused, even if you're worried, let us still pray. Prayer is the key and the solution. So could we rise to our feet this morning as we first begin to pray for our nation, Nigeria? There's so much that's disheartening. A friend of mine said, you know what to say? This is frightening. And I said, we, all we have to do is to keep praying. So just begin to, pray for, begin to pray for Nigeria. Man has no solution to our situation. God alone has the solution. Like it was in the time of Jehoshaphat. They lifted up their eyes unto God and Jehovah shouted, Lord, we do not know what to do. And I believe that is where we are in Nigeria right now. We do not know what to do. Let's begin to pray. Ask him for supernatural intervention crying out unto the Lord to fix this nation, crying out for mercy, 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 mercy Father have mercy, evil will not overrun this land evil will not overrun this land whatever it is that is a burden in your heart is it the security situation is it the economy is it our educational institutions is it the health, whatever it is cry out unto the Lord this morning for supernatural intervention Father, have mercy upon this land. The mighty hand of our God is more than enough to fix this land. Cry out unto Jehovah. Cry out unto Jehovah. Father, have mercy upon this land. Father, we know you are the only one who can fix Nigeria. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Oh, kariya baka, saka, dika, dika, dika. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Eya baria kasuru baria kasa. We cry out for your intervention. We cry out for your solution. We cry out for a turnaround. We cry out for your mighty intervention in the affairs of this land. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Intervene, Father. Intervene. Intervene. Have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. In Jesus' name. Our promise last week was by the mercies of the Lord, we will not be consumed. Actually, it says we shall not be consumed. For his compassions faileth not. His mercies are new every morning. And great is his faithfulness. I want us to cry out unto the Lord of mercy. That by the mercies of the Lord, Nigeria will not be consumed by violence and evil. Evil will not overrun this land. The desires of the wicked over this land will perish. Let's cry out for mercy. That Father, by the mercies of God, by your mercies, O oh God, Nigeria will not be consumed by evil. Nigeria will not be consumed by violence. Nigeria will not be consumed by poverty and corruption. Nigeria will not be consumed by bad politics. Nigeria will not be consumed by the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. Nigeria will not be consumed. 
Nigeria will not be consumed. Oh, the compassions of our God towards us in Nigeria, they can never fail. The Lord will have compassion. And in his compassion, he will arise and come to our aid. And indeed, his mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every morning towards Nigeria. We can never exhaust the mercies of Nigeria. And great is his faithfulness towards us. Great is his faithfulness towards us. In Jesus' name. Quite a number of decades ago, I believe, probably over four, four decades ago, pastor has shared it so many times, had a revelation, and God asked him to pray. And since found him, we've been praying that prayer. That the spirit of the man of darkness will not occupy the center. The spirit of the man of darkness will have no place in this land. Last, the last time we were doing our fasting and praying, and you know pastor was on it every night, he explained, he said, the spirit of the man of darkness is the spirit of evil, the spirit of anarchy, the spirit of chaos, the spirit of violence, the spirit of wickedness. Everything contrary is the spirit of darkness. And he's instructed me to that get the church to pray this morning against the spirit of the man of darkness. God gave pastor that instruction and he has been pursuing that instruction. So I want us to declare the spirit of the man of darkness, you have no place in the center of this nation. You have no place in this land. We run you out. We say no to the spirit of the man of darkness. You have no place in our nation, Nigeria. Spirit of the man of darkness. We come against you in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the man of darkness. We say no in the name of Jesus. We run you out of this nation in the name of Jesus. Hey, abadi, abadi, abadi. We say the blood of Jesus is against you. Spirit of the man of darkness, the blood of Jesus is against you. You have no place in this nation. We say no in the name of Jesus. We run you out. Flee in terror in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I want us to plead the blood of Jesus over this land. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimonies. The devil can never have an answer to the blood of Jesus. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus over this nation, Nigeria. From the north to the south, to the east, to the west, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over every area as security. Oh, we declare safety and peace in this land. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. From the north to the south, to the east, to the west, to the center, we plead the blood of Jesus. We raise the everlasting standard of our covenant. The blood of Jesus. The blood that can never lose its power. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We raise that standard of our nation, Nigeria. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. We're going to pray for the Fountain of Life Church. My brother, my sister, I want to encourage you. In case you don't know, but I believe you know. We're special people in the hands of our God. Like I said in the first service, if hell does not try and trouble you, you belong to hell. If the devil does not try to ruffle you, you are in his, in his kingdom. But we are clearly not of the devil. That is why the devil is enraged against us. But we ourselves, we are enraged against him. And who has the triumph? We have the triumph. So this counsel of God concerning the fountain of life church is that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Jehovah has spoken and so it is. So begin to declare concerning the fountain of life church, the gates of hell will never prevail against us. Begin to pray in the spirit that the Lord builds us. The Lord builds his church. We will fulfill the mandate. We will fulfill God's purpose. And indeed the gates of hell will never prevail. In any manner of form, the gates of hell wants to, we say no, you cannot prevail against us. You cannot prevail against us. For the Lord builds the fountain of life church. The Lord builds this house. 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 The gates of hell will never prevail against our pastor. The gates of hell will never prevail against his family. The gates of hell will never prevail against any of us. We will fulfill the mandate. We will fulfill God's agenda and God's purpose. In the name of Jesus. I want us to plead the blood of Jesus of our pastor. 
Preach the blood of Jesus of our senior pastor and his family. Every counsel of hell will destroy in the name of Jesus. The blood will continually avail for him in the name of Jesus and for his family. We plead the blood of Jesus. Over Pastor Taiwan and his entire family, we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over all pastors and their families. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Over all HODs, past and present, and their families. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Over every worker in church. Oh, their families. The blood of Jesus. Over every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. We plead the blood of Jesus. We raise that everlasting standard of our covenant. Oh, Yabaka Saya. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Over every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you. No weapon of hell fashioned against us shall prosper. That is the word of the Lord. Every tongue is in judgment against us. We condemn in Jesus' name. Only the counsel of our God stands for us in Jesus' name. Lastly, for a few seconds, just talk to God. I don't know what you need the Lord to do for you. Just make your requests. We have a God that can never say we should stop coming. Just talk to God. Talk to God. Hayabaka sikaba. Peyabaka saraba. Puriabaka saki daki daki. Kuriabaka sike dikadi akasuku weki yaki. Kuwa kasaka yabaka siki. Kiyabaka sika baka soro du du du. Teriaba sada ba di de di de di de. Toru ru 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 re 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 re. Payaba sada ba du du de de de. Thank you, Father. Father, we bless you this morning. We have come to our God and our Father who always hears and answers. Thank you that you have heard us. Thank you that your mercies indeed will prevail and avail for us always. Father, we worship you. Thank you for doing as you've promised exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or dare to imagine. Thank you, Father, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. You may please be seated. This morning on Fountain News, Grace Springs Cooperative Multipurpose Society meets next Saturday. Abraham and Sarah's Fellowship meets this Friday. Good morning. Welcome to this episode of Fountain News. I am Mercy Osagi. Grace Springs Cooperative Multipurpose Society will be meeting on Saturday, July 30th at 10 a.m. Venue is the Youth Church. Still on the same day, the Cooperative Society in conjunction with Extra Large Farms will be holding an Agri-Wealth Seminar. If you wish to farm easy, Eat healthy, live healthily, and make money. Save the date and make plans to attend. It promises to be super exciting. For inquiries, please call the cooperative office on 0815-597-7030. Abraham and Sarah's Fellowship, that is the senior citizens of this church, will be meeting this Friday at 3 p.m. Venue is the church premises. If you're 55 years old or above, this is one meeting you cannot afford to miss. A reminder to those who give their lives to Christ between January and July this year, that there will be a special love feast for them on Sunday, July 31st. That is the last Sunday of this month. It will hold in the multipurpose hall immediately after the second service. The Fountain Sports Club regular aerobic exercise continues this Saturday at 6.30 a.m. Venue is the Fountain's Garden. Please come along with family and friends. In other news, Children's Church holds both on site and online today. Please note that the online classes start at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. respectively. Children joining the online classes should do so using the TFOLC link tree address. Home Fellowship holds this evening at 6 o'clock. Please note that there are several Home Fellowship Centers still meeting only online. To join them, please click the Fountain of Life link tree on Instagram for details. 
Still on home fellowship, this is to inform members of the church living around Mafaluku and Oshidi that the home fellowship centers in those areas have been moved to new locations. Mafaluku Home Fellowship will hold at number 29 Rafu Crescent Ogun Oloko Bus Stop. While the Oshidi Home Fellowship address is now number 23 Alimioke Street off Owoshini Street. If you live in these areas, please join them today at 6 p.m. for a time of prayer, sharing the word, and fellowship. For inquiries of home fellowship centers around you, please visit the information desk after the service. Singles Fellowship comes up tomorrow at 6 p.m. Bible study continues online this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Prayer meeting follows at 6.45 p.m. Shower service holds on site and online this Thursday at 9 a.m. Before we go, here are some safety tips if you find yourself in the rain. As much as possible, do not try to walk through fast moving water. This is because as little as six inches of rushing water can knock people off their feet. If you must walk through a flood, use a stick to check the firmness of the ground in front of you. If you're driving, avoid driving into fast moving water. As just 12 inches of rushing water can sweep away a small car. If for any reason flood water arises around your car and continues to arise, abandon the car, move to a higher ground if you can do so safely. Do not touch electrical equipment if you're standing in water or if you're wet. May the good Lord continue to protect us and all around us in Jesus' name. Now, if your birthday or wedding anniversary was last week or is today, please rise as the church rejoices with you. Hallelujah. To all the celebrants, birthday celebrants, we wish you a very happy birthday. Our prayer for you is that as you increase in days and years, that you will increase in favor with the Lord your God, that the Lord in his mercy will open his heaven specially over you as your earthly loved ones, earthly parents would, would celebrate you much more the father of the heavens and the earth, the owner of all things, will celebrate you specially. Happy birthday once again. And to our anniversary celebrants, we thank God for your lives. We ask that our father and our God, do I see anniversary celebrants? Please start, rise to your feet. Let's rejoice with you. Hallelujah. Our prayer is that the years will go by sweeter, your love will be stronger, that the Lord will be the shield and the defense of your home, of your marriage, of your union, and of the products of that union in the name of Jesus. Many more beautiful years ahead in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Congratulations. And if you're visiting with us for the first time in the Fountain of Life Church this morning, please rise to your feet. We'd like to recognize you. We'd like to celebrate you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you specially. That special number was for you. And we just want to say that God has led you here to himself for a purpose. The word of power that you will hear will bless your life, will mold your life, will transform your life, for it is the word of the Most High God. You will be given forms to fill. Please fill the forms just so that 
you know, we can get information with which to reach you with messages from Pastor Taiwo's desk in times in the future. And we just want you to know that you are very welcome to be a part of this big, wonderful family. And our prayer is that today you will be blessed in a notable way that the word and power of God will make a notable difference in your life. In the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God keeps giving us promises, nuggets from his word. And the promise for this week is 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14. Hallelujah. The King James Version says, Now thanks be to God, which always causeth us to triumph. Always causeth us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. The New King James Version says, Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ. And through us, through us, through you, through me, diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Through you, God will diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Everywhere that the soles of your feet will step on, the Lord will use you to showcase the knowledge of his power the knowledge of his saving power, the knowledge of his healing power, the knowledge of his deliverance power, the knowledge of his manifest power. And so whatever that situation is that you are in, Jehovah's power will manifest. The knowledge of who he is will manifest through that situation. Whenever anybody comes to you, a neighbor, a family member, a friend with a situation, God will through you diffuse his power in that situation. Diffuse his, the knowledge of his power, of who he is in that situation, in the name of Jesus. Please let's rise to our feet. We know that we are change agents. We are change agents. You will make a difference. You will make a difference in this nation. You will make a difference in your community. You will make a difference in your workplace. You will make a difference in your school. Everybody will know that the power of the Most High God is overshadowing you and is making the difference in your life, in the lives of others all around you. Father, we thank you. Who are we, Lord, that you are so mindful of us, that you choose to diffuse the knowledge, the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ through us. What a privilege. As we go through our lives this week, thank you for watching this word to perform it in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for making us change agents, for transforming our lives with your power. With, your, with the knowledge of Christ and for transforming the world around us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, go finish. Hallelujah, you know, go finish my mouth. So. Hallelujah, I go finish on my mouth, oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah, I go finish on my mouth, oh. Hallelujah, I go finish on my mouth, oh. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, I go finish on my mouth, oh. No, 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 no. Hallelujah, I go finish on my mouth, oh. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, I go finish on my mouth, oh. No, 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 no. Hallelujah, I go finish on my mouth, oh. We sing. Hallelujah, I go finish. Hallelujah, I go finish. Hallelujah, I go. Hallelujah, I go finish. Hallelujah, I go finish. Help me say. Hallelujah, I go finish. Hey. Hallelujah, I go finish. Hallelujah, I go. Hallelujah, I go finish. Hallelujah, I go finish. One more time, say. Hallelujah, I go finish. Hallelujah, I go finish. Hallelujah, I go finish. Hallelujah, I go finish. And we sing. Hallelujah.
Like I said in the first service, Jehovah reserves the only right to hallelujah. No one else and nothing else can receive hallelujah. No human being dare. No institution dares. Hallelujah is solely for the Lord. Aren't we privileged to be among those that give to him that which only he has a right to? I want you to give a shout to Jehovah this morning. Hallelujah! We're going to give and you see Hallelujah delights our father. When hallelujah is rent in heaven, ah, I'm sure you've read your Bible, what happens? Hallelujah was one of the things that brought down the impenetrable wall of Jericho. Hallelujah causes Jehovah to stand up and dance. Ah, you know when you, when, so, when, you for instance, whoever can make me dance, what can the person not collect from me? So we're going to, I'm going to say praise the Lord for yourself. And don't be deceived. You know, every mother, if there are 50 children, you recognize the voice of your own childhood. Uh -huh. So don't be deceived that we are many. Don't be deceived that all over the world at this time, there's hallelujah going. You see, hallelujah is endless. There's hallelujah going on. You see, the part of the wisdom of God, we're awake now. Some of the world, they are still sleeping. When we are sleeping, they will be awake. Hallelujah is forever. Let your voice be counted in heaven this morning. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! 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 You may be seated. Be found nowhere else but bringing pleasure to your father. Anything that pleases the father be found there. Father, we worship you. We have a clip this morning. Could I call Brother Yinka Gudairo to come very quickly? Let's encourage him as he comes. Morning, pastors. Morning, church. Okay. So, um, about two years ago, Pastor had instituted the Vineyard Project, and this is the outreach to our Northern Brethren. And so, the church had partnered. The project had partnered with people that were on ground, and specifically reaching out to widows and to orphans. And we did not want to do it in such a way that we were just throwing money at it, but it was actually to impact lives and to reach out to every single one of them. Please watch this clip. 50 widows have benefited from skills acquisition training and empowerment programs organized by the Kuka Center and Fountain of Life Church. The widows who were trained in Marco de State Capital also received takeoff tools and seed money to sustain their businesses. Mayowa Okumato reports. In every conflict, women and children are regarded as the most vulnerable as the majority of the men are killed. Benue State has been faced with several forms of crisis ranging from Edith farmers clashes to communal crisis among others. We are not saying you have to. This non-governmental organization has taken up the task to train 50 widows who has adversely been affected by conflicts in the state. Among the 50, 24 women were trained under the household group as eight different products were also made, including liquid soap, air shampoo, air food, coconut oil, turmeric oil, gemicide, and tablet soap. For this project and for this phase in Benue State, we've trained 50 widows and we trained them over the course of four weeks for two skills. That's household and they learned 12 skills, 12 production under household. And then for baking and confectionaries, we also um, trained these exact um, 50 women. The overview of the training is disclosed as it is believed that it will give the widows a long-term support. Trained in two areas, the baking and household products. Under the household products, they were able to learn how to produce things like gemicide, liquid soap, bar soap, turmeric oil, tablet soaps. 
after the training, financial supports are given to the widows to start up their respective businesses. Beneficiaries express his gratitude as they believe that the skills and funds acquired will go a long way in improving their means of livelihood. Issue of the household items. For you to learn it from an individual, you pay heavily. I learned it free of charge from Poker Foundation, and I'm very happy. I'm very happy with the way they name me facts. I'm surprised that they have given us plenty to go and start our own um, business now. This money today, I know that the money will really help me. I didn't go to school, but my children, they are very, very intelligent. So my prayer is to them to God to help me so that I will take care of them. 26 women trained under the baking section made certain products, which include cake, cookies, small chalk, among others. Church is a good place to celebrate God and to thank God for that which he's doing and for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to partner with God in doing this. So far, the church has supported over 300 students and we're doing, we've done about 75 widows. For each and every single one of these people, we can tell you their names, we can tell you their states. For the students, we can tell you their names, their class, their school, where they are, when they're going to graduate. Because like we said, the issue is not just about to throw money into it, but to see these lives. These are testimonies in the hand of God. Can you imagine what God will do with these lives when he turns it around? So we're here to encourage everyone again. That look, to support a widow, we're doing it every quarter. It's 50000 for a quarter for a widow and 60000 annually for the students. Now, TVC has done a great thing by shining light. You know, when you, all you hear is bad news coming from a certain area, every now and then, for there to see there is hope. But the news in heaven is the one that is important. According to James 127, amplified, classified, classic one, I'll paraphrase. It says that the true religion that is the true religion that is blameless, without blemish and pure in the sight of the Father is to help, to help, to, to help the widows and the orphans in the time of their affliction and their need. And that's what we're encouraging everyone to do that. To so please, if you have not joined this, to please join, do whatever you can. Nothing is too small and God will do what he has to do with it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's just bless God for the opportunities we are given to partner with him. We partner with God in so many ways. Prayer, giving. So let us be counted as partners with God in his kingdom business. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I bring greetings from our senior pastor. He's not here with us this morning. He's away for a while, a short while, to attend to a couple of things. And of course, we also know it's a holiday season. But he's very present here with us. Very, very present. I'm sure we're all blessed with last Sunday's ministration, the word and the prayers that came through him. And there are going to be quite a number of that. He's going to be ministering to us now and again on Sundays, even via uh, the online portal. And of course, for those of us that were part of the praying and the fasting, he was there every day. So please just be assured, Pastor is fully here with us, praying for us and following every service. And we know that the Lord will uphold his house in Jesus' name. So he wants me to encourage you to keep coming for services, keep praying, keep believing, keep hoping, and all shall be well in Jesus' name. We shall all testify to the glory of the name of our Father. Hallelujah. Could we please rise as the choir takes us in a time of worship? Hallelujah. Oh, we worship your name. Mm -hmm. Oh, where you are is where I want to be. And what you do is all I want to do. Cause when you move, everything changes. Elohim, you are older than time. Oh, 
When you move, everything changes. El Shaddai, you are more than enough. Oh, where you are, where you are.
keeping father our covenant keeping God we testify that you are worthy of all our worship of all our praise of all our adoration of all our gratitude of all that we are the very lives you've blessed us with you are worthy of Lord accept our worship this morning accept our praise we pray precious Holy Spirit help us to worship teach us to worship thank you Father for we have blessed you in Jesus name Amen you may please be seated hallelujah it gives me great pleasure this morning to bring up the vessel the Lord has chosen to minister the word for this service a very special dear woman of God and for those worshipping with us for the first time it's not only always a women's affair because it just occurred to me as a worshiping pastor who came minister in the morning this also, we have male pastors too and the male pastors too minister but today as the spirit will have it is a girl's day it's the day of the girls I know when the girls are in charge something special is going to happen hallelujah Let's give it up for the girls. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. We, res we respect our men. No? Abi Fountain. Ah, we don't joke with our men at all. Hallelujah. It gives me pleasure to bring up this dear woman of God, full of life, ageless. Welcome with me this morning, my dear friend, my dear big sister, Pastor Lara Adishnoya. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Tosi. God bless you. Well, I'm here this morning to give praise to God. When God is in charge, things happen. First of all, I want to thank my father in the Lord, my mentor, Pastor Daniel Taiwo. Dukoya. Oh yes, he's my mentor. I appreciate you, Pastor Taiwo. We love you. And we know that God is with you. We thank you for the food you're giving us in this church. And we pray that the oil on your head will never run dry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Fountaineers. Today, God is going to be speaking to us. And I pray we'll listen in Jesus' name. I like um this Ijin le ninu ijile Eshewo 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 Tori anomi soro Just a song. You love me more than I deserve. 
There is nothing There is no one To compare with I take pleasure In worship I take pleasure I take pleasure in worshiping you. There is nothing, there is no one to compare. Our God is good. Well, the title of my message this morning, Let God Define You and Not Men. Let our Father in Heaven define you and not men. God can give us insight into his perspective if we ask him. He reveals things about ourselves to us directly as well as through the word. He knows you and me more than we know ourselves. We all know the story of David. When God told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse. That there's somebody there that is going to be a king. And so Samuel went to the house of Jesse. And told him, I'd like to see your children, all of them, let them come out. And they came one by one. And when he saw the first one, he saw his height, his physique, his appearance, handsome. He said, definitely, this is the one. <laughs> but God says, no, I have rejected him. And by the time he brought the other men out feeling that it must be one of those people God said no none of them and he was surprised and he asked Jesse is there any other child of yours around here and he said yes there's one you know there's just one day in the garden always running after animals and he said go and let him come he didn't look like it. He wasn't qualified. And when he came, the Bible said, God told Samuel, pour the oil on him. You are special. I want you to know today that you are special. What you carry, you don't know. But God has destined you to make an impact wherever you are. And God is telling you this morning, let nobody run you down. Let nobody look down at you. Just know that you are special. And God has placed something in you that no man can see, but God sees. And so don't write yourself off. 
Don't feel that even this business is not making it. What has God put in your hands? Whatever God has put in your hands, wherever God has placed you, then know that God has something for you. You are his child anyway. He created you for a reason. And whatever reason, whatever you're going through, please just don't look there. Be focused on God. The way the man thinks does not align. If you don't think the way God thinks, you can get it. You can make it. Your mentality concerning your life, concerning what you do, must change and it must align with God. If your mentality does not align with God, even when you pray, it's useless. Because when God says something about you, you pray concerning that thing, but you are thinking differently. You won't get it. We've got to change our mindsets and our mentality. If there's problem in your thoughts, God cannot use you. If there's problem in your thoughts, God cannot use you. The oil that was poured on David did not change David. David had a mindset. David had the mindset of a royalty. David had a mindset that there is nothing impossible for God to do. God saw the heart of David that David is ready to face any situation because he knows his God is behind him. His mentality was different from that of his brothers. Yes, they might look nice. Qualified, maybe one is a doctor, lawyer, whatever. But God sees the heart of the person that will change the situation the way He wants it. And that is you. That is me. So when you have the mindset of a royalty, there's nothing you cannot achieve. And who is that royalty that you have in you? It's Jesus. Because you know and you know that there is nothing you place with Jesus that he cannot do. And so whatever they have said concerning you, whatever they have said that you cannot achieve, you are no person, you are nobody, Look at where you are, UK. How can you get up there? Who says when God has not commanded it? Let's open to Matthew 21. 26. I think it's 20. Oh, it's my 26 verse 37 or 32. Our God is good. Twenty-eight. Okay. It says, but what do you think? A man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, son, go walk today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterwards, he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, the first, Jesus said to them, As shortly I say to you, that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. When you decide to place responsibility on someone 
that does not have the change mentality to do that which you want that person to do, it has failed. You have two sons. The first one, it, 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 you, you told the first one, you believe in the first one. That is the first child of your, of your womb. Go and do this. Oh, daddy, I would do it. But I won't do it. But at the end of the day, he considered I went to do it. And the second one that said, I will do it, did not. You know, there's some companies that have failed now. Even in this Nigeria, we know when their father died and gave them that responsibility, they never went ahead with it. That company crumbled. But the person that you think might not do it is the one that has the royalty. Who are you? Who am I? What is my own mindset? The mindset you have will carry you a very long way. When you are sick and you say, I am well in the mighty name of Jesus, and you keep singing that to yourself, it changes. But when you are sick and you are dying, say, I'm dead, don't want me. Then you want to it by because there's power in the tongue and whatever you say comes to pass. Don't take the word of God for granted. So what am I saying this morning? You will save yourself by what you speak all the time. God has defined you. As a child of God, he said that in your destiny, there is something I have deposited there. You don't have to see it. David didn't have to say it. He didn't even know. He was not even interested. He didn't even know where God was taking him. Like many of us, we don't know our future. We don't even know where we're going. But we have Christ. And so because we have Christ, we know where we're going. If, you, if a lion allows a sheep to lead him or her, sooner or later the lion... As wild as the lion is, we start behaving like a sheep. But if a, if, a, if a sheep allows the lion to lead him or, or her, even that sheep that you think is a sheep now start behaving with authority and with boldness because there's something that the sheep has learned from the lion. And that is who we are. The lion of Judah. The almighty God, the everlasting king. The lion of Judah, in the word of God, there is a lot for us there to take in. But do we read the word of God? Do we meditate on the word of God? Do we study the word of God? The spirit of man is in the word. The origin of the scepter is in the heart, not in the hand. The heart, God sees your heart. As long as you are having the throne in your heart, you will make it. You will get there. As long as you don't give up, you will get it. Be persistent and consistent and continue to tell God, God, this is who I am because I have you in me. I will make it in life. I will get there. Even ask God for the impossible that you think you cannot handle. God is a God of impossibilities. There is nothing that God cannot do. Every destiny has its mentality. Every throne has its mentality. If God promised you a future, you will get that future. The promise I picked first of 31st of December 2021 that I still continue to speak to myself every day. Is Deuteronomy 15 verse 6. And when I picked Deuteronomy, what can, what, what can be in that Deuteronomy, Father? I wanted in the New Testament. But when I read it, he said, I will bless you as I have promised. You will not borrow, you will lend to nations. You will, no nation will rule over you. I became happy. And I kept on confessing that to myself every day. Hold on, my sick Harry Gaston. I am blessed, like God has said. All the promises in the word of God is for me. I am blessed. I am highly favored. 
I will rule many nations. No nation will rule over me. Hold on, my senior. I will not borrow. Father God, see my account. I will not borrow. I will lend to nation. He said this. And when I tell him, Lord, I will not borrow. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I will give one small testimony. Ah, hey, hey. The day in my account, when I opened, I saw uh, 499. I said, hey, where did I transfer all this money? Only 400 something. Hey, hey, Jesus. Jesus, so I will not borrow. I will lend donation. I will not borrow. I will lend. All of a sudden, I just said, pa, 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 60,000. Oh, my God. 60,000 looked like 1 million. At that point in time, I needed help. I needed God to do something. And he did. Because his word never fails. What do you sing? What do you say? In time of trouble, what do you say to yourself? Our God never makes mistakes. Shown are made in the mentality of the mind. All royal men prefer royalty than their life. You can imagine when you give somebody is the governor of a state or something, and they say, "Ah, we are taking this um, governorship away from you." Somebody say, "Eh, no, uh -uh. why? What did I do?" No, uh -huh. they want to continue to stay there. Our reality is in Christ. We can die for Christ when you are faced with situation, and you know this is the right way, and you know that if you don't, if you take this right way. People might gang up against you. What do you do? You are working in a public service and you know what happens there. And you decide I'm not going to be part of this. And they look at you like, ah, ah, that means that this one is full. Ah, is she going to continue to be among us? You just tell them in a very polite way. No, no, I'm not going. No, I don't want. You can have it. <laughs> they don't know what you carry. You are not doing that because you don't need money. You are doing that because you know what God says. Where is it coming from? Who are you? Who are you as a doctor or as a nurse? What do you do in the hospital? Are you one of those that look at fake drugs and decide and say yes? You have seen that they have brought in fake, fake drugs. What do you do concerning it? Are you an invigilator? When a child or a mother comes to you and says please it's happening. I hear it every day. Some mothers, I don't understand. They go to some, please, I want my daughter to pass. I want somebody to sit for exam. Are you, you are the, what do you do? This is a time of tests. This is a time for your character, for who God says you are to show. Are you going to compromise and say, ah, my hands were tied. Who tied your hands? Uh, who tied your hands? My hands are tied. I couldn't help myself. You couldn't help yourself. But you have the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take control. And Holy Spirit will show. I just want to, us to know that let us seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall fall in place. We are children of God. What is your focus? What do you allow God to define you? Not only in the things that you want him to define you but in everything. Or do you allow men to define you? Then you follow as they are saying, yes, everybody does it. So what's my own? What's your own? You're a child of God. Anointed of the Lord. Holy Ghost feel tongue talking. Who knows the power and the understanding of God? Then you should walk according to the word of God. The Bible says the devil has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God has come to give life. And give it more abundantly. I want you to know. Whether you like it or not. God is coming back. Jesus is coming back. He is coming back. He's coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. He went away and promised that he's coming back again. He's coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. Oh glory. Hallelujah. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. Don't take it like everybody's doing it and so I'm, I'm going to do it that way. No. He is coming back again. Don't let the devil snatch your spiritual appetite. Don't let the devil snatch your spiritual appetite. 
What is the spiritual appetite? You see, spiritual appetite is different from physical appetite. In spiritual appetite, the more you eat, the more you want. The more you eat of God, the more you want. In physical appetite, the more you eat, the less you want. Because you are full. So you don't want more, isn't it? But when you sit on the word of God, when you feed on the word of God, the more you are reading the word of God, the more you want to read it. The more you want to meditate on it. That is who we should be. Let the word of God direct us. Oh, my senderia. The devil will not come with the things that he knows that you can call God and you can demolish and crush every plan of the enemy. But he will come subtly in a way you don't expect with deception. Taking your spiritual appetite. That is what he does. Because when he does that, gradually you are going down. Gradually you don't have time for the Bible. Gradually the time they spend in church is too much. You are looking at your time. You that you get to church by 6 o'clock. 6.30 for a 7 o'clock service. You are strolling in around 8. Ah, no, 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 no. 8. Uh-huh. By 9 it is over. Oh, the service that is supposed to start by 10. By to 11 you are just coming. Uh, they will finish by 12. That is how the devil does it. He used the kingdom, the words of the kingdom to fight you. You don't have the time for the word anymore. You can't read the word. You are always so complacent. Everything is, you are tired of it. When they say fast, ah, one week, that's too long ago. Eh, one week. I will just do one day. That too should be enough. <laughs> should be enough for God. Oh, my senderica, senderia. This is the way the devil starts. This is the way things start. The Bible says that if you are lukewarm, I will spill you out of my mouth. That shall not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We cannot be cold. Not at this time. Things are happening in the world. Everybody is running the race so that they can get there. Where are you as a child of God? Let's ask ourselves. The Bible says that unrighteous person shall not enter the kingdom of God. God said a lot of things about us. He says we are of value. You and me, we are of value. He searches our heart and sees our brokenness. He loves us so much. Nothing can be hidden from him. So God knows whatever you are going through. In Philippians 3.20, he says, We are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. Are you eagerly waiting for Christ? Are you waiting for his return? If you are waiting for his, for his return, are you prepared? How are you prepared? What are you doing? Are you just sitting and crossing your leg and waiting? When he comes, I will go. Without doing anything, please, let us wake up. We need to wake up. He's coming back again. It is short. And he says in Revelation 1, 7 and 22, 12, he said, I am coming back and I will see and all will see him including those who pierced him and all the nations of the world will mourn for him. He is coming soon, which reward to repay all people according to their needs. To repay all people according to their needs. Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? A better day is coming. Jesus Christ also said, we are his friends. He died for you and me. Oh, he died for you and me. He's a, he has selfless love for us. He loves us so much that he gave his life. You can't allow that life to be wasted. No, you know him by now. You can't go back to perdition. Oh, I'm a sender there. And that is why greater, he said, there is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friend. And he said, you are my friend. If you do whatever I command you to do, you are saved. If you do what I command, not what you command, he will, you, 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 you will be saved. And he also said you are clean. In John 15, 3, he says, he took his disciples and told them, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Through his sacrifice, we are washed clean. We are sanctified and justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are clean. You are clean. So we cannot afford to do anything that does not align with the word of God. We are clean. God has made us clean. And we are the light of the world. He said those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom. Definitely. Those who do wrong. We never, look. 
There's some things that some people do that they don't know that it filters down to every other person. When you're a corrupt person and you think that the money, you are, you are just taking it for yourself. No. You are destroying generations to come. Because when they give you money, as a commissioner, as a minister, as whoever you are, you are in your office. And you are asked to tie the road or to do something. And you refuse to do that road. Then, at the end of the day, you have accident. Accident happens on that road. People die. It is, not, it, is, it is that person that has not done what he's supposed to do. So it is not just, that, just taking the money. It's what you are supposed to use that money for. It has not been done. And so definitely things happen. So we have to think of what we are, of what we are doing. We are the light of the world. Anytime we enter anywhere, situation, situations must change. Situations must turn around because you carry power. Hear the promise today, the, your fragrance. It should attract people. They should ask themselves, what is making this woman tick? I remember there was a testimony a lady gave some time ago. And she said, I'm in a different unit and a different department. And they always look down at me and say, this uh, prayer, always pray. Always pray. When you say one thing, her own uh, decision is different because it must align with the word of God. Then one day there was a file that got missing. That file, the documents in that file was paramount to that company. If you don't get that document, that company might go down. So she now came and said, why is your office upside down? What is happening? Ah, they said in our department, there's a file we're looking for. There's a particular document. I don't know. I, I saw that document, but I don't know which file. We have opened all the files, but it's not inside. Hey, they just said, hey, okay. She went to the toilet and decreed and said, Holy Spirit! You know where that document is. Please show me. The Holy Spirit showed her. It's not her department, so it's not her unit. She went back to the place and said, let's open this drawer. They opened the drawer and there were checks of files. Holy Spirit pointed to a particular one. She brought it. She doesn't know the document they're looking for. She brought it out and said, let us check this one. When they checked, it was number one on that file. They respected her for who she is. They have always been looking down that all she does is pray, pray, pray. But when the Holy Spirit did what he did, they respected her and they now wanted to know Christ more. Who are you? Are you a light wherever you are? Do you shine or your light very dim? Do you say something and people just look at you and say, that's what she said, nothing happens. Who are you? Let your word be your word. You are the light. You are the... You, 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 you are the pole. You know what? When, 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 when you hit an electric pole, do you know how the the sha 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 sha? I mean, you know what sha 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 is? Eh, eh. eh okay. Sha 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 sha. It will just be like that. That is who you are. You are a dynamite. You carry sha 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 sha. Praise God. Who is that? You say something, they start doubting you. That you have already, you're on your knees praying. Fire, fire. Oh, my God is good. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Oh, we shine. We are the light and we shine before men. That they may see the Father, the glory in us. The good works and the glory in us, which our heavenly Father has deposited there. Oh, when we follow God closely, yes, we become like him. Can you please give me 1 John 1, 5, we read 5 to 7. TPT, 1 John 1, 5 to 7, TPT. He says, you are already clean. No? 1 John 1, 5 to 7. Praise the Lord. Oh, this is a life-giving message we have heard. Heard him share and it's still ringing in our ears. We now repeat his words to you. God is pure light and you will never find even a trace of darkness in him. If we claim that we share life with him, but keep walking in the realm of darkness. We are fooling ourselves and not living the truth. We say we are lights. But we keep 
the edge of darkness. You know, this is, this is the whole, we are light too. This is the whole light. And then we start walking like this. One day you just fall like this. Let the whole thing be light. Not half light. Not tracing the edge of light. Because when you are tracing the edge of light, sooner or later, the person goes. And then also he says that we are his people. I am the vine. You are the branches. I am the vine. You are the branches. So when we connect to the branch, there's no way that we will not have his DNA. And when you have his DNA, he, 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 he's building us. He's building us. He says, we are co-workers with God. And we are God's cultivated garden. The house he is building. We are God's cultivated garden of the house he is building. You are God's building. You, as you sat down there, you are his building. He molded, molded you. You know, there are so many buildings in the world. So many buildings. And they are all different. They have different shapes. They have different, um, uh, the, the things inside are different. Can you imagine you are a tenant? You are a tenant too. You now rent a house. And the landlord says, okay, this is your key. This is the house. And I say, yes, sir. And then after a week, you now start breaking down. I don't want the toilet here. I want it where the kitchen is. I don't want the kitchen here. I want it where the kitchen is. When the landlord comes, say, eh? What are you doing? He said, I'm reorganizing. Reorganizing what? In my house. You only rented it for some time. So why are you? That is what we do. God has built us. And we are now deciding. I don't want this thing in me. I don't want that one. Let me change it. Let me do this one. Let me. God has built you the way he, wa he wants you to be. He has deposited that thing in you. No matter how you change it, it does not change the building of God. Because the building is in the heart. It is what you have fed yourself with that will make you. It will make you. Oh, my sender, you got sender there. So let us know that we don't have room for, we don't have room for pride. We don't have room for selfishness. We don't have room for complacency. Not in this life. We don't have room for anything that is not of God to be in us. We, have, we are here to serve God. Jesus Christ said, please give me Luke 22, 27. Luke 22, 27. God has deposited a lot in us. He has deposited a lot in us. Our God is a good God. We cannot be inconsiderate. The Bible says, the son of man must now go where he will be sac sacrificed. But there will be great and unending 27. That's not it. 20, 20, hey. Thank you. But that it may be a witness between you and us and our generations after us that we may perform the service of the Lord before him and our bond offerings. Is that Luke? I said, Luke, my brother has given me Joshua. I was wondering. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Luke. Because what is there? Uh -huh. Ah, okay. <laughs> Joshua. Ah, praise God. The leaders who are served are the most important in your eyes. But in the kingdom, it is the servants who lead. Am I not here with you as one who serves you? In the world, in the world, it is the, the orgas. You know, you sit at the table and then they come to serve you. But he's saying in the kingdom, the important people are those that serve. You serve people. You show love to people. You care about people. Even in anger, you talk with care, with gentleness, with humility. That is who we are. There's nobody that can't be angry. The Bible says, be ye angry, but sin not. It is when you sin in your anger that there's a problem. Who are you? What is God saying concerning you? What are the things that we need to change in our lives? We should know that our God is a good God. We should, let, we should be close to God. We should, pay, we should pay less attention to ourselves, but pay more attention to how our thoughts, our words, and our attitude will impact people. You have to be more kind and gentle in everything that we do in the mighty name of Jesus. Our God is a good God. And then discernment of spirit. We have to be discerning. Discernment is a gift from God. When you discern, 
you know what is right from what is wrong. You can easily pick this is what is right. That's why the Bible says, test all spirits and know which is of the Lord. Somebody is saying something, your spirit will just reject you. say, no, I reject that one. That's not for me. I don't, no, 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 that's not for me. You don't go up in everything that anybody says. When you read the word of God, you know where you are. You know who you are. What you reject, you reject. What you take, you take. We have to learn, who, learn about who we are in Christ Jesus. In Hebrews 5, 13 to 14, for someone who lives on milk, is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. But solid food is, is, is for, for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. What type of food are you eating? Is it uh, only milk? Do you understand? Come to church on Sunday, listen, and that's all. You don't even have time to search the scriptures. You don't have time to train yourself by reading the word of God. We need to be strong in the Lord. These are the last days. Let us be ready. Let us be ready and meditate on the word of God. God is good. He loves us so much and he wants to do a lot with us. But when we don't release ourselves to him, then he, can do, he cannot do much with us in the mighty name of Jesus. My time is running so fast. Finally, I'm going to be talking about our spiritual, how do, we, how do we continue to keep that spiritual appetite? I'm going to be talking on evangelism. You see, when you don't evangelize, when you don't speak to people, when you don't talk to people who Jesus Christ is, we're missing it. Because the reason why you are here today is because God saved you. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for, for you. If you just sit down in your office, you don't even talk to anyone. Even your life does not, it does not shine. We have missed it. We should, we should not only wait for group evangelism. You go anywhere, evangelize. I remember just a few, a few weeks ago, I went for a program in a civic center. And then I went to the bathroom, you know. And then I saw this lady. Her Holy Spirit said, that's a candidate. I said, thank you, sir. So the moment I came out, <laughs> hello, good afternoon. How are you? Are you okay? Are you fine? I said, yes. I said, hey, do you know eh, someone, eh? He's a great person, you know? and that person, hmm, when you connect with that person, what happens in your life? Oh, my God. He said, hey, who is that person? I said, it's Jesus. It, it, it's Jesus. <laughs> and then maybe the girl thought I want to give her a job. I said, it's Jesus. Ah, it's Jesus. That Jesus, he loves, she lo he loves you. He loves you so much. He cares about you. There's nothing. Once you feed on the word of God, once you channel your, your heart to him, he will, he will help you out. He said, hey. I said, hey. Ah, he said, tell me more, ma. Ah, I just sat down. Eh? And I continued, forgetting even what I came for. When we now finished, I said, do you want to give your life? He said, yes, ma. Ah, kia, kia. Led, the child, led her to Christ, collected her number, then I kept on calling her. That is it. Don't wait for group evangelism. Evangelize anywhere you are. And God will be happy. He will be happy in heaven because he sees that you are doing what he has asked you to do. He said, go ye into the world and preach to all nations. Preach. So don't say, I don't have the time. Don't say, I'm so busy in the office. God gave you that work that you are busy with. You don't want God to take that work from you, do you? No. So do his will. Praise the Lord. And he says, so for evangelism, I have to rush. We ask God to ignite our appetite. Let God ignite our appetite. Wherever we have been missing it, let God evite. Let, let us be who God wants us to be. Let us have that heart of David. Let us be thirsty for him. Let us be hungry for God. It is what you are hungry for, you look, up, you look for. When you are not hungry for it, you don't look for it. But be hungry for God. When you are hungry for God, he too will be there for you. Let us understand that we are a replica of Christ because we carry his DNA. He says, if you go to 2 Timothy 2 verse 3, He says that we are his soldiers. We are soldiers for God. So as a soldier, you know what a soldier does. He, he fights. So you fight for the things of God. He also says in verse 5 that we go out as athletes. We will follow rules to the end and we win souls irrespective of the challenges. That is who we are. He says we go out in verse 6. He says we go out as hardworking farmers. And we will be first to enjoy the fruits of the labor as these souls are won into the kingdom. 
Because as you win these souls yourself, as you go into the world to win the souls, these souls too will win more souls. They are adding stars on your own crown. And it also says that as an evangelist, you are a minister of the gospel. That is verse 15. As we work hard, we will repent, we will present ourselves to God and receive the approval from the Almighty Father. And it says also we are his container. We are his container. We are filled. We are special utensils, pure and used for honorable use. That is who we are. We are clean from inside out. We should go out and discuss with people, minister to people. Then he says, finally, we are his servant. When you are a servant, you serve. When you are a servant, you want to give all that you want for, to God. Praise the Lord. So what am I telling us this morning? I want us to wake up. I want us to wake up. Each one of us, we know where we are, where we, are, where, where we have not done enough. Please let us wake up. Let's get closer to God. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. We can't afford to be the, uh, the five foolish virgins. Let's read the word. Let's meditate on the word. Let's seek his face. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to direct us. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Father, Lord God, give me ears to hear you. Father, Lord God, give me eyes to see. In the name of Jesus. Let us thank God for who God is. For you are saved. And because you are saved, there's so much that God has, he said your destiny and the good works that you will do is already in you. Praise the Lord. So let us understand that God loves us. Whatever it is, let's leave it at the altar. Ask God for forgiveness. Let us repent and move on. It is well in Jesus' name. Please let us rise. Praise the Lord. If you are coming here for the first time, you have not given your life to Christ. You don't even know who he is. Because everything we are saying this morning, it is only those who have surrendered their lives to Christ understand all what we are saying. You, will not, you don't understand because you don't have that knowledge. You don't have that understanding. So let us feed on the word of God. Let us search the scriptures. Let us ask God to speak to us. Let us ask God to perfect us, to ignite our fire again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Remember, there's something in you that you have not yet tapped. There's something in you that God has deposited in you. There's something that he wants you to take, but you have not taken. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't write yourself up, off. Don't feel that there's something that is beyond you. Don't think that there is something that you cannot do. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So let us, let us thank God for our lives. Speak right now to God. Ask God, Lord God, to ignite you want to be on fire again for God because God is our present help in time of trouble and if you are here for the first time you have not given your life to Christ want you Lord to know that here you cannot go back the same again in the mighty name of Jesus ask God to fill you ask God tell God what you want and I know there will be a change in your life praise the Lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Let's give it up for the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Lara. Hallelujah. Who does God say you are? That should be our focus. That which the Lord has committed to us, that should remain our focus. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Lara. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. Food for thought. Try and remember a lot of what she said. The Lord is speaking to us. The Lord is counting on us. First with ourselves. Who does God say you are? It is who God says you are. That you are. It doesn't matter what is going on. Let us align our lives. Our thoughts. Everything. With who God says we are. And let us do the bidding of the master. The Lord will help us in Jesus name. Amen. Now we're going to give our offering very quickly. Um. Let's just say this prayer for those who want to give their lives to Christ. Just bow your heads. And for those online, just say after me, please. Heavenly Father, I ask for mercy this morning. Please forgive my sins. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Thank you, Father. I'm now your child. I'm now born again. In Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, please just send us a mail and we will contact you. That's the address on the screen and we'll contact you in Jesus' name. I want to encourage us to now bring our offerings unto the Lord. It's part of our worship. I want to encourage us as the children of the Most High God 
to have the Bible as a final say. It's not what any man says or what any woman says. That is why our faith is so beautiful. It's an open faith. Nothing is shrouded in secrecy. There's nothing that, oh, only the pastors know. Oh, only, no. The Bible is there. Read the Bible for yourself and hear the word of God. The Bible says, bring your tithes and offerings into my house that there may be meat in my house. Prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven and bless you. And watch as I continually rebuke the devourer for your sake. Do nothing because a man said it. Look into the word. If a man said it, go back to the word. That was the virtue of the Berean Christians that the Lord commended. After they listened to the word, they went back into the Bible to check if those things were so. Don't let any man's idea or experience rob you of obedience to the word of God. Can we rise to our feet as you lift up your offerings and your tithes this morning? It's part of our worship. It's part of our commitment to the kingdom. And like the Bible says, it's never by compulsion. It's by faith. But be found on the side of obedience. Be found on the side of the word. Father, we thank you this morning. We give in worship. We give in obedience. We give thanking you for this access to partner with you in your kingdom. Father, we thank you for the blessings that come with giving. We do not give because of the blessings. We give first to obey you and to bring you pleasure. And we thank you that it is in your nature to bless and to reward. Thank you, Father. We give in worship. We give in gratitude. We give in obedience. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Please drop your offerings or give online.
rise to our feet, please, as we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Have a truly blessed week. God bless you.